Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how you can use channels within your concurrent Go applications. Now channels are a really cool construct within the Go programming language as they effectively allow us to communicate between different Go routines within our program. So say I had a Go routine A and a Go routine B, I could effectively use channels to communicate between both of these Go routines. Now this idea of a channel is actually nothing new and the concept has been around since the mid 1970s when the likes of Dijkstra introduced it within his guarded commands. Now the developers of Go when they were designing the language have made it their mission to present these different concepts or constructs in a simple fashion in order to enable programmers to create better, more correct, highly concurrent applications within Go. So let's dive into the code and create a really simple example of how we can instantiate a channel and use it for communication across various Go routines. Now the first thing I'm going to do is open up my main function and I'm going to instantiate a new channel called values and I'm going to use the make keyword and I'm going to create a channel of type int. Now just below this I'm going to defer the closing of this channel to the end of this function. Now the act of closing actually stops or prevents any Go routines from sending or receiving to that channel once it is closed. Now in order to interact with channels in Go we can use the send or the receive operators. Now in order to show you this I'm going to create a really simple send value Go routine function which is going to take in a channel which will be a channel of type int and I'm going to use the send operator to send a value to this channel. So this is going to look something like this. So we're going to use the name of the channel, the send operator, and we are then going to send the value 8 to this channel. Now within our main function we're going to want to call this send value go routine, passing in our values channel, and we're going to want to then use the receive operator to block until a value is sent to that channel. Now in order to get that value, I can do something like this, value equals and values, like so. So we're using this receive operator to receive a value from this channel. Now that I've done this, I can then use the print line statement to print out the value that is received from our channel. Now if we see this in action, go run main.go, you'll see that we've been able to successfully send the value 8 from our go routine function to our value uh, variable here and then we've been able to print that out. Awesome, so that's been a really simple example with a, an integer channel. But let's now change things up a bit and change it to a channel of type string. Now by changing this to string, we're also gonna have to change what value we send to this channel. So I'm gonna send the value, hello world. And again, when we run this, we should see that the value is successfully printed out for us. Now, when we instantiate a channel without specifying the size of that channel, it's technically known as an unbuffered channel. And when these are unbuffered channels, communication will only succeed between these different go routines only when both a sender and a receiver is ready. Now, if we were to use a traditional channel within our existing program, we may see some unexpected behavior. Now, with a traditional unbuffered channel, Whenever one go routine sends a value to this channel, that go routine will subsequently block until the value is received from that channel. So let's modify our existing code to highlight this example. So I'm going to add a format.println statement that says executing go routine. I'm then going to have my go routine sleep for a second, like so. And I'm going to add a final print line statement after I've sent a value to my channel, which says finished executing go routine. And finally, I'm going to duplicate line 20 so that we have two go routines trying to send to the same channel. Now, because I've got only one receive statement here to my channel, I expect only one of my go routines to finish its execution, and we should only see one go routine actually execute this final fmt.println. Now the second will not execute or will not finish because it will block whenever it hits this um, send statement and because it's blocked within the go routine and not within the main function the program will actually terminate before that second go routine gets a chance to 
print out this finished executing go routine statement. Now, just to verify what I'm saying is true, let's try run it. So go run main.go. As you can see, we've had one finished executing go routine statement printed out from our first go routine, which was received from. But the second go routine, which has clearly triggered here, because we can see two executing go routine statements, has not been able to uh, complete this execution because it is now permanently blocked. So the way to get around this blocking behavior is to use something called a buffer channel. Now, these buffer channels are essentially queues of a given size that can be used for cross go routine communication. Now, in order to create a buffered channel as opposed to an unbuffered channel, we simply have to supply a capacity argument to our make command. Now, just down here on line 18, I am going to say make channel string and I'm going to give it a capacity of two like so. So by changing this to a buffered channel, our send operation, which is on line 11 here within our two goroutines, should only block within our goroutines if that channel is full or if that capacity has been reached. Now, because I've specified the capacity as two, when I run both my goroutines, they should both be able to finish their execution without blocking because they haven't filled the capacity of that channel. Now, just to prove my point, I'm going to add a really simple time.sleep call here that says one times time.second. And the reason for doing this is because we've not got any guarantee to say that our second go routine is going to finish before our main go routine exits. So just do this, go run main.go. As you can see, our first go routine executes, our second go routine executes. It is then able to finish executing both our first and our second go routine now that we've made that simple change. So that's all we're going to cover within this tutorial. Now we've been able to create both buffered and unbuffered channels, and we've had a look at how we can use these channels to send and receive values between different go routines. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, then please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. If you've got any suggestions as to what I could do better, then I'd also love to hear them. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more programming content. Cheers.